Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Jenny Montgomery. Welcome to another half hour of information to help you make the most of your time to make informed decisions and to keep up with goings on around Greater Augusta. How would you like to take advantage of some upcoming free healthy cooking classes? Dr. Rob Seikerbike will join me in a few minutes with the details. And we are so lucky to have two amazing women with us today talking about two very different topics, missionary work in the Middle East and suicide prevention right here at home. According to the American Foundation for the Prevention of Suicide, there's no single cause to suicide. It most often occurs when stressors exceed current coping abilities of someone who is suffering from a mental health condition. And getting rid of the stigma around mental health conditions is one local mom's mission. Can you relate? I can. My brain has too many tabs open. Sometimes we have to give ourselves permission to slow down for just a minute, to know we can't do everything and that's okay. Terry Lee is committed to raising awareness through her social media sites. Did you know in the United States that 129 people will die by suicide today? In the state of South Carolina, one person every 11 hours will die by suicide. And in the state of Georgia, just in our backyard, one person every six hours will die by suicide. Terry Lee has been with us before on The Jenny Show, sharing the grief of suicide loss. And Terry, I know that this Friday will mark one year since your son Philip died by suicide. And I, it's important that you're here and thank you because I know it's a really tough time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Philip was your firstborn and Philip was well known in this community and you have been an, an amazing advocate this past year. So I want you just to fill us in just a little bit. I mean, from, from when your world crashed a year ago. Okay. Um, it has been um, a little bit of an overwhelming year. We are still very much in the middle of our grief, um, but we are finding purpose in the pain, Jenny. Um, Philip was the oldest of our children. He was 29, um, a gifted musician, yeah. um, someone who loved people very deeply mm -hmm. and who connected with people of all ages from the stage. And so we knew Philip was struggling, uh, some with a substance disorder, but we did not realize the extent of how he was struggling um, with some of the depression and some of the things that were going along with the substance disorder, with the extent of the alcohol that he was using to try to help cope with right. the things that were going on in his brain. And so by the time he did go to rehab and reach out for help, I think things just got out of hand and ahead of him as they did for us in really understanding and being aware of how much he was struggling. And at that point, he became hopeless and died by suicide. You are part of a prominent family. Your husband is pastor of Cedar Creek Church in Aiken. So you've been forced to talk about this, you know, but you've been very transparent about it. Your whole family has. And has that helped you work through this? What, what other things are you doing to work through it? We, we are a very public family, right. um, just because my husband is the pastor of a large church in this area. We have really chosen, I have chosen as a mother and as a nurse to make um, what we have gone through as a family and to make our loss and the loss due to suicide, um, to pull that out into a public arena because of the stigma attached to mental illness, because of the number of young people um, who are dealing with substance use disorders, and because of the amount of pain that's out there. And so I believe with all my heart that God takes us through the things that we go through so that we can help comfort others and walk with them when they are dealing with great pain. And so my walking in this and beginning to take steps forward was my way of really begging God to use this pain yeah. and to use this loss to be able to reach other people who are hurting. So we were forced, but we weren't forced. It's, a, it's an option that I had and we are just choosing to step out and do that. 
I think that you're very brave, and I know so many other people just admire the way that you're doing this. Your commitment to Music Monday, when, when you talk about, you, you blog, and you often will post a music clip of Philip. Um, the other thing that I think is just incredible that you've done, you are a nurse. You know, this you have a medical background, but you have become very involved in being a mental health first responder. Right. Um, after Philip's death, one of the things I started doing as a nurse and a mother to try to understand how did we get here, yeah. what happened, uh, was to begin to read and educate myself about suicide, about mental illness, and about some of the things that we knew Philip was struggling with. And so in doing that, I became aware of some of the statistics out there regarding mental illness. One in five people in any given year will be diagnosed with a mental disorder. And that, that was staggering to me, to know that right. it is that common, but to also know the great difficulty that people have in discussing mental illness or in reaching out, admitting that they are struggling, and asking for help. And so I knew that that's the wall that I wanted to help punch through yeah. so yeah. that people would begin to say, I'm not okay and I need help. And because I do think that that's one of the things that Philip struggled with was admitting that he needed help. You have a foundation, Overflow Foundation. And I love your hashtag, which is hashtag Phil. Right. And that's an acronym. Right. So Overflow Foundation, we came up with that name. Actually, my daughter, Emily, came up with that name. Overflow is the name of Philip's first CD release with all of his music on it. That is available um, on YouTube or on our Overflow Foundation site. Um, but the hashtag Phil. Phil is in memory of Philip, of course, but it's also standing now for something even larger than that, and it stands for pouring hope into life which is exactly what we want the foundation to do on a daily basis, to let people know that there is hope and that there is recovery in the things that they're dealing with. And one of the things that your foundation is going to be involved with, and it's an important event coming up, we want to show you on the screen right now. It's coming up next Thursday, September 12th, and it's, it's called It's Time to Talk About It, and it's presented by the Aiken County Coalition for Suicide Prevention, again, Thursday, the 12th of September, 1130 in the morning at the Aiken County Government Center. Tickets are $20 and then that's Correct. going to include your lunch. Um, the number to call for more information or I guess to make reservations would be 803-641-4164. And Terry, we also want to mention, and this is really important, the local out of the darkness walks to raise awareness about suicide and suicide prevention are coming up later this fall. The Augusta Walk, October 20th. You can call 816-646-9833. And then again, the Aiken Wall coming up November the 10th. It's from 2 to 4 p.m. at the Odell Week Center. Registration is at 1. And you can call for more information about that one, 803-226-1304. And Terry, I know you know this number by, the, by heart now. The Suicide Prevention Hotline. It's 1-800-273-TALK. That's 273-8255. You can call 24 hours a day. Someone is there to talk to you. Or you can text TALK to 741-741. Terry Lee, thank you so much for being here. We have run over our allotted time, which is not surprising because this is such an important topic. But we're putting the entire interview on our website. It's a web extra. Just go to wjbf.com and click the Jenny link. Terry has a special message for you. If you are dealing with the grief of losing a child to suicide, you want to be sure and click that web extra. Still ahead on Jenny, she's a young woman with a heart of service. Joy Zimmerman updates us on her missionary work in Lebanon when we come back.